The Phillies are driving us all to drink at this point. I mean, this team is just, it's a dumpster fire. You've now had multiple games where you struggle with scoring against the Arizona Diamondbacks of all teams. I understand it was, a, it was a homecoming for Pat Gowan last night, but good grief. What a mess. So joining us right now to talk more about the state of the Phillies, Phillies reporter for Crossing Broad, Bob Wankler, joins us here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Bob, how you doing today? Josh, what's up, man? How are you? Uh, well, I think I'm better off than the Phillies are because uh, the Phillies, I think, don't know who they are anymore because I played the audio earlier. Dave Dombrowski told us over a month ago, well, you know, we can out hit. We can out everything. You know, we have the offense to win the division. We have the offense to outdo the defense and the pitching. And now, before the ninth inning last night, that was four straight games. You scored two runs against the Diamondbacks. So I think we all were sold some wolf tickets when it comes to this offense, or were we? Yeah, last night uh, was concerning again. I mean, they they probably would not, not scored or would not have scored, I should say, last night had had Arizona not played little league defense for for most of the night. But in the fifth inning, in the ninth inning, the only two innings which the Phillies scored. Listen, you know, when Dave Dombrowski made those comments, uh, Reese Hoskins was healthy in the middle of the order. Uh, that has since changed, obviously. Um, that was before Andrew McCutcheon got hurt, and he has certainly not been the same player since returning from injury. Uh, Alec Bohm, when Dave Dombrowski made those uh, comments, was in the middle of a stretch, about a two-month stretch, in which he was hitting a little over 300. Gene Segura is one of the best hitters in the National League, at least in terms of batting average. And, uh, you know, really in the last month, uh, all of these guys have gone into simultaneous slumps uh, and or have had to deal with injuries, and it has completely hit the fan here now for this offense. What can be done? Because it seems like every night Girardi is changing the lineup. Like tonight, there's even there's no McCutcheon in the lineup tonight at all, by the way. You know, it's a doable Herrera playing left field again. So, you know, is, is Girardi just throwing darts at a dartboard and hoping for the best at this point? Like, you know, what, what can be done? Well, you know, there really isn't a ton that can be done, I think, in terms of lineup construction. Um, you know, we've talked about Ronald Torres and the season that he's had and the number of big hits that he's had. But, you know, the bottom line is that he's a player who has been overexposed in recent weeks and his production has certainly waned. Um, that being said, you know, Freddie Galvis is in there again tonight. They'll try to hope that a couple of these guys that aren't traditionally good hitters will just kind of catch fire for a couple of weeks. Maybe they can snowball things together uh, and 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 take advantage of what remains as a, a vulnerable schedule, even though you wouldn't know it based on how the Phillies have played over the last two plus weeks. Uh, but no, there's really no fix here. You know, it, it's it's the, the guys that are struggling just need to turn it around. And, and there's just no real good alternative. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think we've kind of reached the point in this season and, and where the Phillies have been now for the last two, three weeks th that I, I don't think that we're in a, a solution phase anymore. Like, I don't think that you can really forward think and say, how can this be fixed? I think the reality is that this is a, a flawed team uh, that that had some guys that could maybe overcompensate or or sort of negate those issues. But right now, it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. I mean, this team looks cooked. So if they are cooked, is it just a deal where you just say you're you're trying to survive the year? Is that where we're at right now then? Or are they just like playing out the string and hoping for the best? Yeah, this week, uh, it kind of felt like it was like the Phillies' last gasp. You know, they come in and they they have the raise and you kind of expect them to split with, with Tampa maybe – uh, and then take three or four or perhaps even sweep Arizona. You got Zach Eflin coming back. You have Reese Hoskins coming back. Uh, and you saw the way that he swung the bat on Sunday. And so you're feeling kind of good. Like, here it is. We've 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 had some stumbles here lately. We slipped to four and a half games out coming into the week. But we can make our move right now. Uh, and instead, you know, they have two tough late losses to Tampa. Hoskins is out for the year. Zach Eflin's going back on the IL, and I would probably be pretty pessimistic about the, the likelihood that he comes back and contributes in any meaningful fashion uh, for the remainder of the year. And so now you're got, you have Matt Moore back in the, in the rotation again, and I just think that the way that this week has sort of played out, what you have to do now is, is find out, you know, listen, mathematically they're still in it. The Braves have some tough games coming here. Maybe they can put it together for a weekend, the Phillies, and, and cut this thing to like three and a half. You know, I'm not saying it's the end of us talking about a wild card or an NLE's possibility, but the likelihood is that 
in the next two weeks, they're probably going to fade out and they have to figure out what they can salvage and what they have moving forward. Bob Wangler joining us here on the Sports Bash on a Friday edition on 97.3 ESPN at Bob Wankel CB on Twitter. Uh, Bob, you know, it's been suggested, you know, with Hoskins out now, you know, do they do they stay in house? Do they try to take a risk on someone? Like I know, uh, I think Mikel Franco was released, right? And Todd Frazier is hanging around out there with a job. Like, you know, do do you go out there? Do you stay in house? I know there's only a few more days, so the roster expands a little bit. What what do you think the Phillies should do? Well, what I think they, they should do, and, and Joe Girardi, and again, I'm not down there t- today, uh, or I'm not down there yet, I should say, but Joe Girardi apparently told reporters pregame today that JT Real Muto will play a little bit of first base here coming down the stretch. Uh, so that means that you'll either see some, well, I t- I'll tell you what you're going to see. You're going to see some Rafael Morshan in September. You know, they're not putting JT Real Muto at first base so they can get Andrew Ma- uh, Knapp more, more at bats. That's, that's not the goal here. But, you know, uh, it's been a, a tough year physically, I think, for JT Real Muto. He's taken a beating behind the plate. And I think this is an uh, opportunity to kind of, um, you know, give him a little bit of a breather and, and maybe lighten the load on his body a little bit. So you'll see JT Real Muto play some first base. You'll probably see some Rafael Marchand in September, who they really like from a defensive perspective behind the plate. Uh, and then, you know, I think that the Phillies would be served uh, in the next week or two coming back to Alec Bohm. You know, we're talking about a guy that's had success at the major league level offensively. I know he's had a share of struggles this season. I, I think they owe it to themselves and Alec Bohm to see what he can do playing a little bit of first base over a two, three week period down the stretch, especially if playoff contention kind of becomes a pipe dream. See, I'm conflicted because on one hand, I, I just don't want to see Alec Bohm at first base anymore. We've discussed that before. On the other hand, it's like, what do you have to lose at this point? Like, I just, I feel like, like you said, like this was the last gasp this week. This was the week to maybe see something. And it just feels like this team has become an embarrassment to me, Bob. Like, I just feel like, you know, you, you gave us this bill of goods. You sold us the wolf tickets. You gave us the parade and dance. You gave us the eight-game winning streak. And then you just said, all right, we're done. And it's like, you got two former MVPs. We were told that J.C. Ramuto is the best hitting catcher in baseball. Segura's batting, what, 230 since the All-Star break. And it's like this team is just, like, completely helpless offensively. And the thing that we thought was going to be the problem was the pitching staff. The pitching is actually fine overall. It's the hitters that just can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, in that series against the Rays, you you got two very good starts between Ranger Suarez and and Zach Wheeler. I mean, I know things fell apart for Wheeler in the ninth inning, but you certainly could question whether or not he should have been out there in the first place or if he should have been in the game as long as he was once things started to unravel in the ninth inning. But they got two very good starts there, uh, and to to lose both of those games was obviously crushing. So I think that what's happened here is that that some of these players – are playing hurt. I think some of them are just slumping. And I do think from a psychological standpoint that they know uh, that once Atlanta caught fire the way that, that, that they did and the way the Braves started playing here, I think they realized that they were kind of climbing an uphill battle uh, or facing an uphill battle, I should say. And, and I just, those good vibes from the beginning of the month, I think are just completely gone. The momentum's gone. And I just think they know it. I, I think they're a team that's very aware of, of what, uh, what has happened here and, and where they're headed. I know that a lot of people wonder what happens next, right? You know, Hoskins has this surgery, right? He's done for the year. It looks like, you know, so what happens with him this off season? You know, I know we've discussed the idea of you got to pick between Hoskins and Bowen. Well, now Hoskins is getting surgery and you feel like he was really the only guy that was hitting at times for this team. He was, he was batting 247, but he was leading a team in RBI you know, are you inclined more to keep Hoskins heading into this offseason now? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think that the DH is going to come into play. So I don't know that the Phillies are necessarily committed to an either or scenario between Alec Boehm and Reese Hoskins. But, you know, we've talked about it a few times and, and I've said, hey, you know, how do you change this team's DNA? How do you change the core of this team? It hasn't worked out here now uh, with two different managers over a number of years. So what do you do? And Reese Hoskins, you you can make an argument outside of Bryce Harper, Reese Hoskins, when he was on the field this season, at least offensively, was probably one of the the very few bright spots. Um, 
So, you know, saying, hey, trade Reese Hoskins or move on from Reese Hoskins seems kind of silly, but you do wonder, how is he viewed around the league? And, you know, are there teams that would be willing to acquire him and, and pay uh, a, a fairly decent package for him? And, you know, you could reshape your roster and reshape the identity of your team a little bit. You know, fans don't want to hear that because he's a good player and he's a seemingly a great guy and a clubhouse leader. But you do just have to wonder, you know, sometimes you have to do things that hurt a little bit, that are a little bit uncomfortable in order to get to where you want to go. And I, I do wonder if the Phillies kind of take a step back after the season and realize we're not a tweak away. You know, we're not one player away. We're not uh, Byron Buxton away or one of these elite level shortstops. Um, or maybe they assess this and they feel that they really can patch. The, you know, a couple guys underperformed here this year. They ran into some bad luck. You know, and now that Ranger Suarez in the rotation, Kyle Gibson's here for a full season next year. Maybe this all comes together and they want to, you know, push it and go one more time with the core group that they have. There's no obvious answer, though. You know, when things don't go well and you miss the postseason or you probably will miss the postseason, you want to feel like that there's an obvious solution in place that they can take in order to get to that next step. And, and right now it's really hard to see through all of this. At the end of the day, you know, we're, we're getting close to the football season. The fans are going to start losing more and more interest in the Phillies. I mean, are, are they going to be able to get 20,000 people in the building in September? Like, I, I feel like the fan base has just been completely uh, just deflated. Yeah, when you take a look at the way that they've, they've drawn um, post, uh, post the New York series, after the New York series, it's, it's been light. I mean, you know, they announced 23,000, 25,000 here. That was theoretically, uh, you know, during a stretch in which they had serious or legitimate playoff aspirations. They really just never were able to consistently break that 30,000 barrier. Uh, you get into September, kids go back to school. They seem to be training towards irrelevance. Uh, you know, 20,000 is going to be tough, I think, for them in September. And, you know, listen, stranger things have happened. It's still a, a weak spot in the schedule. They have three more with Arizona. They go to, to Miami, who they've had some success with here this season. Uh, and then they play just a, a god-awful Nationals team after that. So, you know, could the Phillies string together a, a six and three stretch in Atlanta, go three and six or four and five in their next couple games, and the Phillies get this thing down to, to two and a half or three and a half games in September? Yes. Uh, I wouldn't be stunned by it, but it just is – it feels hard when you look at – fact that they have 35 games left are they going to be able to run down this Atlanta team and, and cut six games out uh, it, it's just hard to see it he's Bob Wankel crossing broad at Bob Wankel CB on Twitter follow him for all the Phillies coverage as the Phillies are limping into the months of September at this point because Bob at this point I got college football on the slate tomorrow Eagles cut down day is Tuesday huge college football weekend next weekend then the NFL is here, and the Phillies will just be put putting away. And I'm just looking at the Phillies, and I'm like, man, I I I feel like I've I've lost my month of August at this point. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. If you're looking for a positive, at least the Phillies were able to bring you to the college football season. So we've arrived there. <laughs>